to conclude here, these symbolic relationships, the symbolic system, requires both symbolic and indexical relationships, which is to say that it's, it's not that the, the symbolic system just relates signs to each other, right? It's not just about the signs to each other, but rather <coughs> that the relationships between signs give us indications about the relationships of those signs to the object and about the relationships about, of objects to each other, right? Because you, we're actually discovering um, laws of relationship that are common to the signs and the objects, right? So recall we had this thing about the purse had the example of the murderer and the murderer, the, the, the murdered person, right? And it's actually, it's a, it's a sign relationship between murderer and murdered person and through this concept of murder, the verb murder, right? That always links a murderer to a murdered person, right? So it is a sign relationship, but it obviously also that sign relationship is reflective of an object relationship, right? So that it's not just that the sign for the murderer has to link to the murdered person, but it's actually the case that in the world, a murderer, if there's a murderer, then there has to be a murdered person too, right? So that um, it's about subordinating our understanding of the object relationships to our understanding of the sign relationships, right? And so the the symbolic system includes both. It includes the, the association between the sign and the object and the association between the signs and signs, but the, the association between the sign and object is subordinate to the relationship between sign and sign. We understand objects through our understanding of signs in the relationship to each other. You know, and it's, you know, I, I think you know, that the example that we had from Helen Keller when she was in Niagara Falls is, is a good example of this, right? She has that one indexical relationship in which you can feel the tremor of the falls, like with her hand on the windowsill, right? That's the only kind of sign to object relationship she has. That's the only indexical relationship ha she has. Everything she else she experiences about the falls is based on these sort of sign to sign relationships. All these, these words and sentences about the falls that she can c extrapolate from that one associational relationship. But the associational relationship of index is, is not unimportant. It's still very important to this because you still have to maintain this general correspondence of the sign to the objects. It's just that you're able to understand those, um, those sign to object relationships as subordinate to the relationship you're setting up between signs. And, and, that, and, and you're understanding that those objects are going to have to, re will relate to each other in the same way that those signs relate to each other. Okay, um, and so just the final point um, here is that in laying this structure out, Deacon is indicating that syntax precedes semantics. And you remember this, this issue with, with Pinker um, in which he said, well, you have to have the words, the names of things first, and then you can add the grammar. And what, what Deacon is indicating, no, in fact, it's reverse. You have to learn the grammar first in order then to, to understand the names of things. And, and, this, and, the, and the example with the monkeys illustrates this. They have to understand that m the meaning of give or give me, right, first, and how it works and what nouns go with it before they can then start adding nouns to, the, to that category of, of basically that every word it become, you know, banana and, and grape and cucumber and carrot, whatever, all of these things that you eat become, become those nouns only in relationship to that verb, give me, right? So each new verb opens up a whole new class of nouns, and that new class of nouns only attains meaning through that relationship to that initial verb. So then you had the, the, the things to drink, you had the other uh, verb, you know, pour me, and then you have this whole class of nouns that, that, are, that are sort of um, become nouns through that relationship to the verb. And so you've got different classes of nouns that appear with the introduction of each new relational category, and each verb is really basically a kind of a relational category in which it assigns these roles to the different nouns. And so the, the meaning of the nouns really only
becomes apparent through the relationship to that verb that assigns it a role. And then you know you can add then vocabulary items. Each verb opens up this this whole set of noun vocabulary items that you can start adding to the system, and it becomes easy to add to the to the system that way because you understand the relationship of uh, of that new word to the previous words, right? And so each word that you're adding to the system is not being added as a as sort of a isolated indexical relationship. It's being added as a relationship to the previous signs in the system. So you're adding another piece to the, to the, to the sign system, right? Uh, and so that's why then for, for Deacon, then the syntax is preceding semantics, that, that the grammar is preceding the meaning of words. Yeah? Okay, so um, we're out of time, so I'm going to just, these are the questions, look at them, and if you have questions, you can ask me next time. Okay, thanks.